All right, everyone, today I'm gonna to talk about some common mistakes that I see preppers making. The first one is thinking that buying in bulk will always get you a better deal. So when buying prepper foods, you think that just because this is a wholesale food store and you're buying in bulk, you're gonna get a better deal than a regular grocery store. This is true sometimes, but it isn't always the case. I've seen this in some restaurant wholesalers where they sell something in bulk like rice or sugar. They'll have something like 40 kilograms of it, but when you actually calculate how much you're paying per pound, you can actually get a better deal at a regular grocery store. Most people just blindly buy things and think, hey, I must be getting a good deal because it's in bulk and I'm getting it from a grocery wholesaler. So make sure to always compare prices before you buy. Another mistake I see preppers make is buying food that they themselves and their family don't even like. So for example, if you don't like lentils, then don't stock up on lots of it. Just because some YouTuber said you need to stock up on it, doesn't mean you have to. Make sure you actually like the food. Yes, we did discuss in the Siege video that people will eat anything when they're hungry, everything from leather boots to each other. But having food that you actually like can make things a little bit more bearable during an emergency. Plus, when it comes to canned food and eating it and replacing it when it gets close to the expiration date, if it's canned food that you don't like, then you're just going to waste it. You're not even going to eat it. Along the same lines with that, people buy bulk freeze-dried food without even testing it first. So they'll see a company that sells freeze-dried food buckets and they'll just buy a whole bunch of it. So it happens with me too. I sell freeze-dried food, but I recommend buying a small 72-hour food kit or something like that before you end up buying like a whole year's worth of it. At the very least, go online and watch videos and read reviews of it and see what the majority of people are saying about the food. The next mistake I see preppers make is trying to buy everything at once. This is something that a lot of new preppers do. They've never prepped before, but they see something on the news and all of a sudden they panic. They order a whole bunch of supplies at once and max out their credit cards. I've said this before, but a better thing to do is buy small amounts of supplies every week. People sometimes DM me saying they're panicked and they're seeing stuff on the news and what should I do and what are all the things that I should buy. My advice is to find out what your budget is and then create a plan. It could be a three month, six month or one year plan and then focus on it and do something every week according to that plan. Maybe in week one, you'll buy a bag of rice and a first aid kit. Next week, you're gonna buy a propane stove. In week three, you'll buy water storage containers. Just a little bit every week, depending on what you can afford and what you can comfortably spend. Another prepper mistake I see is buying five gallon buckets from online survival and prepping stores. I always tell you all to buy dry food, put them in Mylar bags, add oxygen absorbers, and then put them into five gallon buckets. This helps keep out pests, light, moisture, and oxygen, which can affect the quality of the food. Some new preppers assume that they can only get these buckets from prepping and survival stores, and I can understand why they think that. But most of these online stores are overcharging for five gallon buckets. Some of them are even charging like $35 a bucket. You can go to a hardware store and buy five gallon buckets for like $5. Places like Rona, Lowe's, Home Depot, and if you're in Canada, then even Canadian Tire is a good place. The next mistake I see preppers make is neglecting to store comfort foods. Everyone stores the staples like rice and beans, which is very important. But having foods that'll make you feel good is important as well. So having things like freeze-dried candy, which will last like 30 years. If you're in a long-term situation and it's miserable, your kids are going to be really happy when you bring out something that they can enjoy. Even regular candy, hard candies like Jolly Ranchers will last much longer than things like gummy bears and chocolate. I have Jolly Ranchers in a couple of my survival kits. When I mention things like candy, I get comments saying that it's useless to store it because there's no nutritional value. I disagree. I think surviving an emergency has just as much to do with the mental part as it does the physical. Even the smallest bit of enjoyment could help keep you going and give you some hope. Another mistake I see preppers make is neglecting their fitness. So they have all the weapons, food, water, and gear, but they can't jog a mile. If you have serious health issues and your doctor told you not to do any physical activity, then that's a different story. But if you're just being lazy, then you need to start working on your fitness. It doesn't have to be a serious bodybuilding routine. Just do what you can to improve. If you haven't worked out in a long time and are completely out of shape, then even walking 10 minutes a day will help a lot. If you're in okay shape, then maybe doing a simple routine like push-ups, sit-ups, and squats on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will be good. You need to be able to carry someone to safety, walk a long distance, protect your family. You won't be able to do all that if you're out of shape. The next mistake I see some preppers make is not working on your weaknesses. 
and also overdoing it in only categories that you enjoy. You need to be well-rounded as a prepper. You see this with married couples a lot. So for example, the husband is really focused on buying his 10th survival course or tactical training course and buying his 7th AR. When in reality, he probably doesn't need that stuff. He needs to focus on learning other things. Then the wife is usually focused on things that are a little bit more practical, like growing food, preserving food, creating an emergency fund, and saving up for important purchases like a freeze dryer. So what I'm saying is that the husband should also be working on learning to grow food and preserve it as well. The wife should also be going to the range and learning survival skills as well. You need to diversify your skills because what if one of you isn't there anymore or one of you gets really sick? Don't only focus on what you enjoy, focus on what's most practical, what's most important, and being well-rounded. Another mistake I see preppers make is not testing your survival gear. People get excited about prepping and buy all this nice survival gear and never test it out and never use it. They'll say something like, oh, I don't want it to break or get damaged. That's actually the whole point of testing your survival gear to see if it works and to see if it's good quality. If you're testing something out and it's gonna break, then it's better that it happens while times are good than when you're deep in a survival situation. You don't want your stuff to fail and break on you when your life is depending on it and you need it most. So maybe next time when you go camping, take all your survival gear and your bug out bag and test everything out and see how it works. All right guys, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and follow.